Today we're going to be talking about the, the very, very important difference between abdominal exercises and what you need to know if you're getting started off, especially if you're getting started out with abdominal training. Now, how do you know if, if you're a beginner, if you're getting started you know, with abdominal training? Well, here's, here's the thing. If you touch your abdominals right now and they are not rock solid, then that's an indication that you're at the beginning of the spectrum of abdominal and core training. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean if you've got strong abs that you have balanced and you know healthy abs or healthy core muscles, but it might be a little bit more advanced. Because I, I mean, I have a lot of I've worked with a lot of clients, and I have friends that spend all their time with their abdominal workouts just doing sit-ups and variations of sit-ups, twisting bicycle crunches, leg lifts. Also, I mean, you know, sure their abs are strong, but is their deep core really healthy? Okay, are they protecting their spine in the long run? Now I understand that if you want sexy abs, you want a six pack maybe, maybe you don't even care about that stuff. But let me tell you, it's very important. I'm just gonna drop my pen, I gotta get it. It's important because if you don't have a healthy core, over time, you are creating more muscle imbalances than you're doing good. So let's, uh, let's jump into this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the difference between two very important notions in abdominal training. Okay, so this is movement versus stability. So if we think about our, um, if we think about our, our, our really our eight pack muscles. Okay, our, I'm just going to draw these out. Okay, I'm going to light this little drawing. Okay, we've got our belly button here, and traditionally this is where our pant line would be. Okay, right about there. And then we've got two other kind of lower abdominal muscles down here. So it's really an eight pack, not a six pack. Okay, and our chest would be up here. Obviously, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a man, right? Um, so this is our eight pack. Now, traditionally, what we've thought of these muscles to do is this motion, okay? So flexion. That's why so many people do sit-ups. But you know what they also do? Is they prevent extension. So if you were, for instance, if somebody came to you and said, hey, dude, I have a beef to pick with you, and they pushed your chest back, the first muscles to respond to preventing you from falling back would be your abdominals, those rectus abdominis, those muscles right there, okay? The eight pack muscles. They prevent you from excessive extension. So they don't just, so dynamically from a movement perspective, they move you into flexion. But from a stability perspective, they prevent, they prevent excessive extension. And I'm gonna argue that as a beginner, and really, as any, like really anyone starting off with any kind of core training program, you need to first start off with stability, okay? You need to focus on stability before movement because if you create movement-based patterns and develop muscles for dynamic and movement reasons only, you've lost the stability, you've lost the foundation. It's like building a house on quicksand. Uh, you can build this amazing house, like six stories, but if the foundation is built on quicksand or if you've got termites eating away at the foundation, it's gonna crumble, okay? So that's, the, that's the, the foundation is stability. You need to build that stability in your core. Another way to look at it is the fact that, as I mentioned in a previous video, our core is much more than that eight pack muscle group, the rectus abdominis, which I just mentioned. There's actually, I don't even know how many muscles, if I were to count them off, but let me just rhyme some off. We have the rectus abdominis, which are eight pack muscles. We have the transverse abdominis, which is like a waist belt, which is one of the deepest muscles in the core. We have our internal and external obliques, which are those kind of oblique uh, diagonal fibers running along the side of the core. We have the quadratus lumborum, which is a muscle you've probably never heard of, which attaches to the, uh, to the lumbar spine and the sacrum. Again, it's a muscle that most people are, when they're doing these kind of exercises, right? <laughs> that's the muscle that they're working, but they think they're working their obliques. It's also the muscle that's working when you're doing a side bridge. Um, and then you also have, you have the multifidus and all sorts of smaller muscles through the core, through the back. Those all consider the core. Now, the core is any, any muscle that crosses the shoulder or hip joint. Okay, so that's a lot of musculature. So technically, you know, some of the rotator cuff muscles, the chest muscles, uh, your lats, 
pretty much all the muscles in your torso can be considered part of the core. And that's what I define as the core. It's not just the abdominal muscles, it's a lot more. It's a lot more um, inclusive than just an eight pack, okay? So here's another way of looking at stability, a very important way of, uh, of considering things. This is actually by, uh, I believe it was Stu McGill, or maybe Paul Cech, I'm not sure. This, this notion of a sailboat, okay, or a ship. Now, I like sailing, I don't get to do it that often, but I'm gonna do my best to convey this message to you. Okay, so we have our, our sailboat here, okay? So this is not water, this is actually the base of the sailboat. And this is our mast, okay? So this is the mast or the pole from which the sail, the, the main sail would, uh, would attach. Now, in a big ship, right, if you, if you ever think about like Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, those, those kind of movies, you see these old ships, they don't just have a mast, right? They've got all sorts of supporting wires, right? We'll call these guy wires. So they might have a guy wire to the front or to the back, and then they might have one going to the back part of the ship or the side, and they might have another one going to the other side of the ship. So, you know, if we were to look at this from, a, from, a, from above, this would be the, or that's not a very good picture. If we were to look at this from above, Right, we have a helicopter flying over top. We see the ship like this, okay? This would be the, the mast, right, the, the pole. And then we have our guy wires, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, so if we, this is synonymous with the core, with the torso, right? This guy wire here might represent our rectus abdominis. The opposite of that would be our erector spinae, right? The muscles that go alongside your spine in the back. So now we have a bit of balance, okay? These guys might be your external and internal obliques on both sides. So you get that, you kind of get this, and what's happening is that these guy wires are pulling. It's like if you've ever gone camping and pitched a tent, you know those, those cross poles and everything? They all provide a certain amount of tension. Now what happens though in most people, and this, and me included, is that one side might have more tension. One side might be more developed. And this is where the problem occurs with most people is that let's say you're doing sit-ups, sit-ups, sit-ups all the time. You're overdeveloping that guy wire. What's happening to the one that's supposed to antagonize it or, or kind of work against it, you know, the, the back extensors? If you're not developing things in a uniform fashion, these imbalances over time, I'm not talking about tomorrow, but over time will create big health problems for you. I'm talking about uh, postural problems, low back problems, pain and discomfort. You know, so from a visual from a visual perspective, you know, is it going to make a difference? Not really, right? If you want to see your six, six pack abs, this stuff doesn't really matter. But give it a couple of years, and you're going to start to feel this effect. Okay? So the idea here is that you can still get six pack abs or a flat stomach or lose belly fat by training properly. Okay? So if we're ta I'm, so here, I'm talking specifically about developing the strength in those core muscles. I'm not talking about belly fat here. We've talked about the belly fat, how to get rid of it, what to do. Here we're talking about specifically how to train the core muscles initially to develop the stability. So what we want to do is we want to develop a good uniform approach to our training so that each of those guy wires is equally strengthened. And there's a couple different tests you can do. So I'm going to give you uh, two of them right here. So the first one is a basic plank, okay? So you've probably done a plank before. I'm gonna to try to draw a diagram. Uh, oh, that's not bad at all. <laughs> okay, so this would be your head, you're on your forearms and toes, and you're basically holding a plank. So it would be like walking the plank off a ship, that's why they call it a plank. Hold the plank, how long can you hold it for? Anything less than two minutes is a risk factor for potential low back issues in the, in the, in the future. The next one you wanna do is a side bridge or a side plank, and I'm gonna to try to draw this one here. So this one will look like something like that, and something like that. Okay, so you're on your side, and you have your forearm directly underneath your shoulder, and again, I'll, I'm gonna be showing you these exercises over these videos, in vivo, 
And what you're doing here is on your left side, you're gonna hold that for as long as you can, and then on your right side, you're gonna do the same, hold it as long as you can. And what you'll find, again, in 99% of the people that I've ever worked with, there's usually an imbalance. One side is easier to do than the other, and that's probably caused by years, and this is again going years of holding something on one hand or on one side of the body as opposed to the other, and focusing on doing specific things on one side more than the other, slouching a certain way, sitting a certain way, so these are all things repetitive over time that have caused these imbalances. And these imbalances over time pull on your spine because, I'm just going to erase this, if we look at uh, the vertebrae in your spine, so I'm, I'm looking at the back here, the spine for a second, if we're going to look at the vertebrae, and obviously this is a very scientific drawing of our vertebrae here, <laughs> we have these, there's different processes and projectiles coming off off you know, the different uh, vertebrae. And some of these muscles actually attach directly to them. So they'll attach, they'll attach, they'll attach. Um, you know, like our transverse abdominus will come right around. You know, so if you have certain muscles pulling more on this side than on this side, then it's gonna create some issues over time. It's like, you know, if, you have, if, you ever, if you've ever had the, the privilege of dog sledding, I haven't, but if you've ever taken, uh, if you live in Alaska or the Northern Territories, and you've gone on a dog sled ride, the reason dog sled rides work is because they have a number of dogs all running in the same direction, okay? So that's ideal. But what would happen if we had one dog, what would happen if we had one dog that went this way? That's, that's my rendition of a dog, okay? So our dog sled is here, our sled is here, and we've got uh, our dog, dog, dog. One decides to go this way, one decides to go this way, we have another one who wants to go that way. What's gonna happen there? Are we gonna make any kind of forward progress? No. And the same thing is going on with core training. So, the rule is we need to start off by focusing on stability, and that means focusing on movements through, not focusing on movements, but focusing on developing um, stability through kind of uh, introspective contraction, if you want to call it that. So it's, it's focusing on specific muscle contractions and holding them through various positions so that you're able to stabilize your body more effectively. Once you've developed that base, then you can move into some more dynamic stuff down the road, okay? And the sit-ups and stuff like that, you want to keep to a minimum because they will, and again, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit later, wedge out your spine and your intervertebral discs and stuff. Um, you want to keep it to a minimum, but you can get into some more dynamic stuff because the reality is that in life, you're not just standing like a straight board, right? If I'm playing tennis, again, I'm gonna use a tennis example, and I serve, I'm gonna go into extension here. So my back is going that far back into extension. Again, what's happening here? My rectus abdominis are working to prevent excessive extension, but they've also, they're now storing elastic energy, and that recoil effect as I come forward, they're gonna snap and contract and allow my body to take that energy from my lower from my legs and throw it into my serve. Okay, so that's obviously an example of where I'd want to use more dynamic movements in abdominal core training. Okay, so um, that's the difference. Stability first, then movement second. How long do you do stability for? Well, it depends. I mean, it really depends on the individual, but I would suggest uh, starting off with at least, let's say a month, two to three times a week, focusing on these stability-based movements, things like planks, side planks, bird dogs, knee drive holds. Again, I'm gonna give you all this stuff, so don't worry about it. Um, all the exercises, believe me, that's, I'm gonna make it as easy as possible for you. But if you can, fo if, and, and trust me on this one, I don't do sit-ups. The extent of my sit-ups now are stability ball crunches, and I'm talking about a crunch where I'm literally going from this to there. Okay, so it's like 10 degrees range of motion. And I'll tell you why I do that later on. Um, but here's the thing, I don't do sit-ups. And I have, I don't know if you can see this. Well, you can see the wire from my headphone or from the mic. But I've, I've had, I mean, I've had strong eight pack abs for as long as I can remember. And well, actually there's a funny story that I'll tell you in, in, at a later date, it's not really important now, but there was a reason that I started doing abdominal training when I was in high school. And it didn't really work out until I started training properly. So anyways, to this day, I feel stronger, I perform better, I've got stronger abs, visible abs. Again, the visibility stuff is not gonna come to you 
this stuff. It's not going to come down to stability versus movement. It's going to come down to your diet, what you're doing with your overall strength training and interval training workouts. That's going to burn the fat. And to be able to see it, right, you're going to obviously want to do some specific core training. And starting with the stability-based movements and then, sorry, stability-based exercises and then moving to the movement-based exercises. But again, there's nothing wrong with doing a plank. There's nothing to say that doing a plank and holding the plank like this for two minutes is not going to get your abdominals on fire. And if you haven't tried a plank yet, give it a shot, okay? And then let me know how it goes. So if you, if you want to do a plank, if you want to do this plank and side plank test, do it now. Let me know how you did in terms of times below the video. And, um, and we'll see if there's some imbalances and some ways that we can correct it. So that's it for today. Stability first, movement second. And we'll see you in the next video of April of Apps.